Boston starter Aaron Seely was out to keep the Sox in the postseason race, mowing down seven Tigers in his five and a third innings. And all 13 Tigers would take a seat via the strikeout. The Red Sox find themselves five and a half games back in the wild card race and need to take advantage of the spiraling Detroiters. The Sox have been the hottest of all the wild card contenders since the All Star break and look to make it two straight next. From the corner in downtown Detroit, Passports presents live coverage of Detroit Tigers baseball. Tonight, the Tigers host Mo Vaughn and the Boston Red Sox. Second game of a three-game series. Hi again, good lookers. Jim Price is with us. My name is Ernie Harwell. We've got a beautiful night here at the corner. The Tigers and the Bostons going at in game number two of the three-game set. The Tigers now have dropped to 100 games. And they've lost their last 10, so they've got to do a little bit better. But the law of averages is with the Tigers tonight, believe me. Okay. And the uh, <laughs> Cleveland Indians are happy, hey. I guess, Jim. They they clinched that the Central Division again, and they've got quite a ball club. Yeah, first time in their franchise history that they won back-to-back -back championships. Clin clinching the American League Central last night, 91 and 59, 12 games over the Chicago White Sox and then 17 games back the Minnesota Twins and Milwaukee mm. and Kansas City but that Cleveland ball club is at it once again. AL West looks like this Texas leading Seattle by four games then Oakland and California both have dropped out but uh, Seattle with an outside chance still but mm. Texas looks awfully strong going down the wire. Well we've got another division to talk about the one the Tigers happen to be in and uh, Baltimore and the Yankees are having a little fun now they got rained out last night but it might be interesting if the birds can come up with something. Well they're going to have to make that game up as we take a look at the East right now the Yankees lead Baltimore by three games Boston eight and a half back so it's a race between New York and, and Baltimore and you know they control their own destiny because they're going to play the Yankees uh, for the next three or four games and Baltimore has a chance to even that score pretty quickly. The stretch run best since all star break none other than the team the Tigers are playing tonight Boston. They really got hot there for a while then Baltimore right behind them Minnesota and Seattle. Now let's take a look at the American League wild card. Baltimore is leading the wild card race Seattle three games back Chicago three and a half and this very same Boston team five and a half games back. So anybody's choice for that wild card as it stands right now. Starting pitchers for tonight. I guess you could call the young and the old Ernie Boston sending Roger Clemens the great Roger Clemens. Sometimes the word great is used uh, uh, the way it shouldn't be. But in Roger Clemens case he is a great pitcher and Justin Thompson uh, part of the future for the Detroit Tigers who has struggled a little bit his last couple outings but hopefully tonight he can turn that around. And here's the lineup that Justin will be facing tonight for Boston leading off and playing second base will be Jeff Fry batting second Nomar Garcia Pera. He'll bat second and third spot the big man for Boston Mo Vaughn. Jose Canseco will be in the cleanup spot just off the disabled list last night. John Valentin will follow him. Then the veteran Mike Greenwell former Detroit property Rudy Pepperton will follow Greenwell and batting eighth will be the catcher Bill Hasselman and Darren Bragg will bat ninth for Boston. Now let's take a break and then we'll be back to Tiger Stadium with more Tiger. <laughs> Detroit Tiger Baseball on Pass Sports, brought to you by Office Depot. Taking care of business for companies of every size, everywhere, every day. By your Michigan Toyota dealers, where customer satisfaction is guaranteed. And by your local Michigan and Northwest Ohio cable television company. Glad to have you back with us at Tiger Stadium. The Bengals have taken the field and will be ready. Early. For the Tigers tonight defensively, we'll start in the outfield. It'll be Higginson, Barty, and Melvin Nieves in right field. In the infield, Nevin at third, Travis at short. Trammell gets the start at second base. Tony Clark at first base behind the plate. Brad Osmus doing the pitching tonight. Justin Thompson. Justin, one and five on the year with a 420 ERA. He has pitched. 45 innings for the Tigers, giving up 41 hits, 21 earned runs. He has struck out 
24. He has walked 24 and struck out 36. So Justin Thompson, who is looking to snap a three-game losing streak, starting for the Tigers tonight, Ernie. And uh, each manager has uh, shuffled the lineup a little bit, uh, especially uh, Mr. Kennedy of Boston with the left-hander going. He has uh, moved him around a lot in the batting order. Jeff Fry, the second baseman, will lead it off for the Bostons. He's hitting 296. He has four home runs. And we're ready to go with a game's first pitch from Thompson. And it's a ball high, ball one. Seventy degrees here at game time and a big win coming in from left field. There's a ball inside on Fry, 2-0 and on the leadoff hitter. There's a breeze, as indicated by the banners. Strike on the inside corner, Mr. McClellan's a very deliberate call. Like the ball players, the umpires have their individual mannerisms and styles. There's a pop up out toward the middle of the diamond. Trammell at second base makes the catch for the out. Well, Ernie, the wind tonight is blowing very similar to the way it did last night. Uh, Again, a good pitcher's win. There were a couple of fly balls hit last night that would probably have been home runs if it wasn't for the win. And I think it's even a little stronger tonight than it was uh, yesterday. Here are the other umpires Tim McClellan back of the plate, Tim Cheetah at first, John Shulock at second, and Ed Hickox is behind third. Garcia Para, the batter now, a 220 hitter. Brought up from uh, Pawtucket the end of last month. He takes the ball. Young man from uh, Las Vegas, born in Whitaker, California. 23 years old. There's the skipper, Buddy Bell. Ron Oster next to him as bench coach. There's the other side with uh, Mr. Kennedy. Tim Johnson is his bench coach to his left, and uh, Sammy Ellis to his right, the pitching coach. 2 and 0 the count. So Justin's been behind 2 and 0 on each of the first two hitters. He got the first one fry on a pop up. It's a strike 2 and 1. Now this is only the third year in organized ball for Garcia Para and he takes one low 3 and 1. This Red Sox organization likes this young man, Ernie. He has good range, and they feel eventually be able to swing a good bat. But he attacks the ball. Fouls this one away, and the count will be full on him. One out, nobody on. We're in the first inning. The game has just started. The leadoff man, Fry, popped the second. Justin Thompson, the young man from Houston, Texas. There's a high foul out of play. It will be back into the upper deck and right. In his last outing against the Yankees, he went four and two thirds innings, but he walked five. That was really his downfall in that ball game. And gave up six hits and five earned run over that runs over that span. That's the power takes. It's a high one. He's on with the walk. A man on and the man out from Ovon, who's been moved into the number three slot for tonight's contest. 41 home runs for the big guy and 134 in the RBI column. Dave Oliver, the third base coach. Well, you talk about an offensive machine. Big Mo is that. Standing off the plate a little bit more tonight than he did last night. And it's a breaking ball to hit the target strike one. They've overshifted on Mo. With only one man on the left side, that's Nevin, who is the third baseman, but actually playing shortstop right now. One and one, the count on Vaughn. Garcia Parra at first base. See, under a normal stance for Mo Vaughn, his hands would actually be on the inside part of the plate. But as we took a look from that, 
from our center field camera there you can see how far back off the plate he is tonight against Justin Thompson the left hander. Runner goes he got a good jump and he makes it easily with a stolen base. Well he not only got a good jump he picked the right pitch to go on a breaking ball. There you see there the high leg kick and the good jump by the runner at first and good throw into second base but uh, Garcia Pera with his first stolen base of the year. One ball two strikes that's the account. It's even on Mo 2 2. They try to pitch Mo in tight. You notice Brad Osmus that time move inside. He, he a lot a lot like a, the a lot of the power hitters Cecil Fielder and so forth like to extend those arms and they like the ball out over the plate. So you try to tie him up with good stuff inside. Now it's a full count and Osmus wants a conference with his young left hander. Well, what you want to watch early with uh, Justin Thompson, a young, strong kid, is that he doesn't try to overthrow. And when pitches are upstairs for the most part, uh, he might be trying to overthrow. And Brad may be out there to try to uh, settle him down a little bit. It's early in the ball game, and a youngster like uh, Justin, uh, full of pep of energy, so they want to try to settle him down a little bit. No score first hitting man at second one out Vaughn waits on a three two delivery. And that one hit the bat and a ricochet away into foul territory. Well that's a break for the uh, Justin the ball looked like it uh, hit the barrel of the bat and uh, that probably would have been ball four. They shot up the middle, the glove by the shortstop Fryman and the gun over to Tony Clark. Ordinarily, that would have been a base hit, but Fryman played it perfectly. Well, they uh, they chart all the hitters. They have advanced scouts, and uh, that's why they do that. This ball is a uh, bullet up the middle, but right to Travis, and an easy out at first base. He looked at making the play at third base, but he wanted to be sure to get the sure out. That's why he went to first base. And. Uh, Garcia Parra moved easily to third on the bounce out here. Conseco, who came back in action last night, coming off the disabled list, and he takes the ball high. And actually knocked in the winning run last night with a uh, bases loaded walk. With all the time he missed, Jose still has 28 home runs. Infield back now, two out, a man at third. No score, first inning. And the breaking ball gets over for a strike. One and one on Conseco. Well, that's a good sign from Justin early in the game. That was a all-speed breaking pitch. It had a lot of bite to it. Seiko just a while back had the back surgery. There you see, he took something off of it. Perfect pitch, went down ten inches. High fly hit down the line and the left may go foul. Yep, it will. One and two, the count on him. Yeah, you know, Ernie, if uh, Canseco could have stayed healthy, hard telling what kind of numbers he could have put up uh, throughout his career. But he's had injury problems throughout his career. There's a foul fly that will uh, drift down toward the bullpen and be out of play in the seats and then uh, drop into the bullpen. Uh, first error of the ball game. <laughs> Major League uh, scouts did not even file a report the Major League uh, Scouting Bureau when this young man played down in Miami. But uh, Camilo Pasquale found him and signed him. There's a pitch in too close. And what a play by Brad Osmus saving a run. Twenty three pitches already in this ballgame for Justin. That's a lot. 
2 2 pitch. He is wide, and the count is full on Conseco. I'd like to see him give him that off speed breaking pitch again. Ground ball to third. Nevin, the long throw to Clark, and the inning is over. At the end of a half inning, no score. Well, the young left hander threw a lot of pitches, but uh, he was able to keep the Boston Red Sox off the home plate area. So, all in all, good start for Justin. Leading off and playing left field will be Bobby Higginson. Batting second at second base tonight, Alan Trammell. Ruben Sierra will be the DH and bat third. Tony Clark will be in the cleanup position. He'll be followed by Travis Ryman. Then Melvin Nieves will bat sixth. Phil Nevin will bat seventh. Brad Osmus will follow him. And Kamira Barti will be in the ninth spot for the Tigers. Defensively for Boston, it'll be Greenwell, Bragg, and Rudy Pemberton in the outfield. In the infield, it'll be Valentin. Garcia Para, Fry, Vaughn, Bill Hasselman doing the catching and doing the pitching tonight, Roger Clemens. And what can you say about Roger Clemens other than he's just been a great pitcher for a long time? 9 and 12 this year, 382 ERA. He's pitched 219 innings. He's walked 98, and he has 219 strikeouts. And Terry Francona talks about Roger Clemens. When you say great, and you know, when you look at longevity, and you can say a lot of things about him. Let's just hope it they don't come true tonight. <laughs> this guy's given the Red Sox a lot of good years. He still throws hard, probably not like he used to, but he's come up with a split finger. He's got that break of ball. He's, he has good command. Boy, he's really tough. He can throw in. He can throw the ball away. He just he's one of the better pitchers to ever pitch this, you know, to play this game. Yeah. And we're going to have to really go some. We're going to have to make him throw a lot of pitches because sometimes the best way to beat him is to get him out of there. Yeah. Roger Clemens that's what he did his last start against Chicago where he picked up the win seven innings seven hits five earned runs he walked four, and he struck out four. now his career lifetime is outstanding 191 and 110 losses and looking tonight to tie the great Cy Young Ernie as the all time winning as pitcher for the Boston Red Sox there's his record against the Tigers but he has so many records. He like so many of the great players Ernie when you look in the press guide have a lot of pages in that press guide. Well I think you can capsule it by saying he's a three time Cy Young Award winner. That's a, a pretty good start right there for this 34 year old right hander. And at the moment uh, he has uh, the leadership in strikeouts in the American League with 219 despite the fact that he's 34 years old. Right. Well you know when you look at his lifetime record. There you see 66 career games with 10 plus strikeouts but 191 and 110 losses with a 3.07 ERA that is mighty good for that long a time. Bobby Higginson will be the first test for the rocket man Roger Clemens Bobby batting 320 and then the leadoff spot tonight. He's had 24 home runs and 75 runs batted in. So the rocket ready to go to work. And we're scoreless in the last half of the first. There's the fastball that's so characteristic of him hitting the outside corner for a strike. In close on Bobby in the Cow Demon one and one. Well, Bobby Higginson back in the leadoff spot for the Tigers. No matter where Buddy puts him, he seems to. Seems to doesn't bother him at all. Doesn't matter if it's fourth or fifth or second or first. Roger is high and outside. The count is two and one on Higginson. Clemens uh, was born in Dayton, Ohio. Lived there for a while, then they moved to Texas. And remember, came out of the University of Texas. Didn't take it long to make it to the big team. Second year in the Boston system, he was up with the parent team. Fouled away. 2 2, the count on Higginson. Well, you heard Jerry Francona talk about his different pitches now. He used to be a, just a hard thrower, fastball, and a breaking ball, and a 
occasional changeup, but now he's added a split finger, and it has been a good pitch for him the last couple of years. Ground ball, big hop, second baseman Fry over to Mo Vaughn, and there's one up and one down in the scoreless first inning. Alan Trammell, the Tiger veteran, is stepping in. Allen batting 231. Or he's had a good career against Roger Clemens batting 371 lifetime 23 for 62. So one big reason he's in the lineup tonight. It's the ball on Tram ball one. And when you think about that uh, lifetime batting average against this great pitcher that tells you how good a hitter Tram was because that was during his heyday. Deep short stop off the glove of Garcia Para. It'll be a single for Trammell. Would have been a tough play for Garcia Para, unable to come up with it. Had that top spin on it, but the ball would have been in the hole and he'd have had a throw on the run, which would have been a difficult play with Tram getting on first base with a base hit. Ruben Sierra the Tiger DH batting in the number three slot will be up now against Roger Clemens no score first inning man on for the Tigers one man down. There's a ball in tight on him still daylight here at 723 at the corner. Clear skies and the breeze are coming in from the north at from left field. Moved him back uh, two and zero on Ruben. Travel at first. Mo Vaughn holding with him. There's a strike. Two and one. Good fastball on the outside part of the plate to Sierra. Did he go? Yes, he did. That's a strike. 2 2. Ruben with a pinch hit last night to drive in two runs. In fact, that tied the ball game up at, the, at that junction of the game. One on, a one out, no score in the last half of the first at Tiger Stadium. Full count. Tony Clark. Trammell's going and they swing and a miss, but Trammell steals second. Each team with a stolen base here in the first inning. Two down for Tony Clark with Trammell at second. Well, here it is a good split finger that. Uh, Hasselman had a little trouble getting out of his glove but Tram had a pretty good start and he had had a difficult time throwing him out anyway so stolen base for Tram. Two forty six hitter Tony Clark. Say he's got a good split finger tonight. That's the pitch we talk about as we take a look at the rank uh, rankings of the rocket number one in strikeouts fifth and in innings pitched third. Batting average against him in ERA seventh, the 3.82. Roger Clemens. One and one, they count on Tony Clark. Now he becomes a free agent at the end of the year, talking about Roger Clemens. So this possibly could be the last time 
Tiger fans here in Detroit will see Roger Clemens. He may end up in Houston or someplace closer to home, Ernie. Quite likely. Tony waiting on one delivery. It's the target on ball two strikes on Tony Clark. Looking at the spot where his home run uh, went out on Sunday right there. A mighty blast. Got him with the good fastball and at the end of one it's scoreless. Terry Francona talked about the kids in all the tri strikeouts. Not only young players, all players. Yeah. When you're struggling a little bit, you want to do too much. And I think that's a good trait, but it's not helping us win right now. They're trying to do too much. They're trying to get a home run instead of a single. They're trying to get two hits in one at-bat. It's because they're conscientious, and that's a good quality. But we need to, to fall back a little bit and, like you said, swing at strikes, get base hits, get runners on, and it'll be, get contagious. John Valentin will lead off for the Red Sox. We've got a scoreless tie. We're in the second inning. Valentin, a 297 hitter, playing third base in this series. And Justin Thompson goes to work in the second. Delivers a strike. After Valentin, it'll be Mike Greenwell and then Rudy Pemberton. Strike two. He's gotten the first two into the strike zone. Another good year for Valentin. Well, pop fly back of short. Fryman uh, drifting back and uh, makes the catch for the out. Ernie, want to wish a happy birthday to Samuel Stoat. He's 100 years old today. Tiger fan all his life. Samuel Stoat, S T O U T E. How about that? That's great. And I've got a belated uh, birthday wish for Rosalind uh, Russo of uh, Raisinville Township. We got the notice a little bit late, but we appreciate her loyalty and support over the years. Here's Greenwell batting 276. And it is a strike on Mike. If Greenwell have nine uh, runs driven in in the game up in Seattle. Uh, yep. Just after he got pretty off good the list. Yeah. Pretty good uh, week for most people. Two strikes to count on him. Take a look at this last pitch. The cut fastball. Boy, perfect location. Great angle from Justin that time. And he got him with a hook down on the way. That's the first strikeout for young Mr. Thompson. Now we'll see a former Tiger, Rudy Pemberton. He was uh, with the Tigers. Boy, that back was, in '95. That was a great curveball. As we take a look at it on supervision, and I'm talking about a nasty curveball. It went down 10 inches, and that was a quick breaker. Six straight strikes thrown by Justin this inning. Rudy batting at 3.33. And he short stay with Boston, no home runs, four runs batted in. They brought him up from Pawtucket where he batted at 326. Had been to Oklahoma City for a while in the Texas system. There's a strike called. Well, he's got a great curveball tonight. Pemberton, you may remember, was the outfielder for the Tigers in their 1995 opening day. And he takes a wide one, two and one from Jason. Justin. <laughs> no score We're in the second inning, Boston batting. Fouled away. Justin walked the man in the opening inning. He got all the way to third, didn't score. Wide to Pemberton. Full count. Well, 
Ground ball up the middle through for a hit. That's the first Boston hit. Pemberton on with a two out single in the second. Hasselman will be the batter. Totals even now no runs one hit no errors on each side we're in the second inning. Rudy Pemberton before he came up to the Tigers a pretty good base stealer in their minor league system. There's another strike. Two quick ones on him. Checks in and holds it second. Well, that's a no-no. A hit in the count, 0 and 2, and a fastball out over the plate. Brad Osmus had called for a fastball, but he wanted it inside. He wanted to move him off the plate a little bit. But Brad out now, talking to Justin about that last pitch. That's a, a no-no. Now look where the ball is. You saw where Brad was, out over the plate. You young pitchers out there, when you're head in the count, it's in your favor. Don't give in to the hitter. Work the hitter. Two on, two out for the Red Sox. Game scored his second inning. Darren Bragg, who led off in last night's game, batting number nine in this one, hitting 2 6 3. And he looks at a strike. Ernie, I've known some managers, if you give up a base hit with a count 0 and 2, uh, you had a healthy fine after the ball game. And it's in there again. Two quick strikes. Well, I think what has happened because they've taken a lot of fastballs is he's established that curveball already. And, uh, you know, they can see from the bench what's been going on. And the guys that have seen it are coming back and say, boy, you better be ready. He's got a nasty breaking ball tonight. Well, let's see what it'll get now. It's strike two. Fouled away. That's Pemberton, the man at second for Boston. Hasselman at first base. Game scoreless. We're in the Red Sox second inning at Tiger Stadium. Strike two pitch to Darren Bragg. Breaking ball on away, one and two. With the fastball, 2 2. Yeah, this is the pitch he wants to get him on. He doesn't want to go to 3 2 where the runners will be off with the pitch. Here is the pitch he wants. A little chopper hit on the ground to Justin Thompson. Throw the first to Tony Clark, and they're out. Tigers bat in the second. It's still scoring. This now Tiger Baseball and Pass Sports is brought to you by the employees of Avis. We're into the future, into it now, and we're trying harder than ever. That's Avis. Scoreless tie, the Rocket Man, Roger Clemens, ready to face uh, Travis Fryman, the Tiger shortstop, leading up in this uh, scoreless second inning. 
Travis batting 200 lifetime against Roger seven for 35. Breeze are picking up and the gusting a little bit here at the corner. Mr. Clemens ready to go into action. Ball one on the fastball. While we were away, we were talking about Ernie and I were talking about that no hitter in Colorado last night. Neomo threw a no hitter against the Colorado Rockies there. That takes some doing. Just shows you if you can uh, do it, you can do it anywhere. Yeah, you can do it there. The way the ball jumps out there, you're doing something. Want to know the count on uh, Travis? Fouled away. That'll be upstairs out of play. And good to see Lansing John Smoltz picks up another win. 22 for him on the year. Another foul out of play. He didn't get around on that fastball. Tigers got a single from Trammell in the opening inning. He stole second. That's the only damage they did against the Clemens in the first. Now going at him in the second one two the count on Fryman. Two two. Well Clemens Ernie can still get it up there in a hurry. You think of all the pitches he's thrown throughout his career. Not too many years ago he flirted with the 300 mark in strikeouts. There's a swing and a miss. The ball gets away from Hasselman. He throws to first. Devon in time to complete the strikeout. Well, three strikeouts in a row now for Roger Clemens. He got Sierra Clark and now Travis to lead off the second inning. Melvin Nieves will be the batter. Well, I tell you, I couldn't tell. Apparently that ball just bounced away from Hasselman. Uh, Travis uh, went too far. And Hasselman had to chase yeah. it down quite a ways. Here's the Avis batting a 2 5 0. Oh. And he looks at a strike in above the knees with that fastball. 21 home runs. He missed uh, quite a while because of injuries. Well, Frank, too. Ernie, you know how we like to talk about the positive. When you look at, at uh, Tony Clark, who is a 30 plus home run man, Melvin, if he stays healthy, is a 30 plus home run man. That's a lot of home runs in the heart of that lineup for you. So there are some bright spots for this Tiger Ball Club. There's a wide one, one and two, the count on Nieves. So much talk around the area about the Tigers losing 100 games. He hits the strike zone and he stood there like the house by the side of the road and watch that one go by. Four well, in a row. Yep. Chalk up number four. Another fastball. Melvin takes it. Looks like it had a large part of the plate. Now Phil Nevin will uh, test the hard throwing right hand to Roger Clemens. Phil a 286 hitter. He's throwing the strikes. Coming into this ball game with four tonight, 2,552. So that's 2,556 lifetime strikeouts, Ernie. There's another one. He's got two quick ones on the Nevin. He's really in the groove right now. Two down, nobody on. Game scoreless. Tigers second inning. High and wide, uh, one and two. Well, Roger Clemens had a streak this year of 28 scoreless innings. So even though you look at his record and see it's nine and 12, uh, he has still put up some good numbers this year. Two two, the count on Nevin. That's five all in a row in the 
strikeout column for Roger Clemens. At the end of two, the game scoreless. Welcome back, everybody. Tiger Baseball with Passports is brought to you by Ford. Think Ford first. Right now, get as low as 2.9% financing or cash back up to $2,000 on selected vehicles at your 31 Metro Detroit Ford dealers. And Tiger Baseball and Passports is brought to you by Gaylord Golf Mech of the Midwest. 21 incredible courses, one beautiful location. That's Gaylord. Well, the young left-hander and the veteran right-hander tied up here in a nothing-nothing deal. We're in the third inning. Fry leads up for the Red Sox. Justin Thompson delivers his hook across to start him off with a strike. Fry popped to Trammell at second base to start the game. Boston with two hits, the Tigers with one. Mm. Oh, baby. Ernie, does he have a good curveball tonight? This, I think, is the best curveball we've seen Justin have. He's got two quick strikes on him. And he got him with the high hard one. So there is strikeout the number two for Justin Thompson. I tell you, when you make pitches like that, by that I mean the first two breaking balls, and then you come back with a fastball about. 94 95 miles an hour you're going to jump at it no matter where it's at and this one is by him. did you see how he was tied up no chance Garcia Parra will be the batter now Nomar the first time up walked got all the way to third on a stolen base on the bounce out but was left there and uh, Justin gets the first one in for a strike. the count on him Ernie isn't it neat to see uh, uh, this type of matchup a uh, young kid like Justin with uh, the great veteran Roger Clemens this is really a classic matchup fantastic here's a pitch I've seen a lot of swing in here in the <laughs> early innings hey, I tell you what this is one night I don't want to get my bat I don't know about you but no sir. I hope I don't get called on the pitch in tonight one two the count fly ball it into right center. Barty backs up and gloves it for out number two. That's the first ball hit to an outfielder. Mo Vaughn, the big slugger, steps in now. He bounced to Fryman right over the bag at second base in the first inning. Fryman's going to station himself. Farther over on the right field side of second right now with nobody on. There's a ground ball hit towards second. Trammell over to Clark. It's an easy inning. The one, two, three for Boston. Tigers bat in the third, still scoreless. Welcome back, everybody. The news from the front office is brought to you by Office Depot. Taking care of business for companies of every size everywhere every day and we talked about this a little bit earlier the Dodgers Hideo Nomo first pitch his first career no hitter last night at California I mean at Colorado and what a job that must be Ernie with that light air out there to be able to not only pitch a no hitter but keep him in the ballpark. Absolutely well Lasmus will lead off for the Tigers now against Roger Clemens who has struck out the last five batters. And we. Uh, Heard an announcement about Felipe Lira getting a hand injury during batting practice. We're going to see what else we can find out about it. Osmus is batting 251, four home runs, and 20 runs batted in. And there's a curve to start him off strike one. Last night, one for two, a couple walks, scored a run. Swings through the fastball, two strikes on him. Game scoreless, the Tigers are batting in the third inning against Roger Clemens. High and wide, one and two on Brad Osmus.
First base side. Osmus trying to get it started. We've got a scoreless tie in the Tiger third. Fouls another one away. Second to bat. When Trammell got that single in the first, he stole second and uh, got no farther. He's the only runner the Tigers have had in the first two innings. Now the 2 2 delivery. Missed the outside corner, full count. Ground ball is short. Garcia Para flips it over to Vaughn, and there's one down. And it was announced today that the Tigers have signed a player development contract with the West Michigan Whitecaps, Ernie. I know that was uh, rumored to make it to happen, and uh, I know the Tigers are thrilled with that arrangement. Vice President of Baseball Operations, General Manager Randy Smith, talked about the arrangement. And I think everybody here with the Tiger family and all our folks uh, with the Whitecaps are very happy. With that new relationship with the Tigers, Arnie. Yes, sir. Barty at the plate hitting 272, and uh, he looks at a strike. Uh, Rogers getting that first strike over with a regularity here in the early going at Tiger Stadium. Barty with one home run this year and 14 runs batted in. One and one the count on him. It'll sure be nice for the. Uh, Tiger fans to watch some of these young kids come up through the organization. They have tremendous fan support. Nice facility. You've seen that facility, haven't you? Great ballpark up there and a lot of loyal fans. There's a strike called. He took the fastball through the heart of the plate. One and two on Barty. Uh, Valentin backs up at third. He was in close looking for the bunt possibility. From Camara. One out, nobody on. Game scoreless. He got him another strikeout for Mr. Clemens at six. He had five straight, then the bounce out by Osmus, and now he starts over again. Well, so far, this is just called being overmatched. Another split finger. Look at it go out of the strike zone, and it actually bounced up. Once again, a Tiger hitter going for a pitch not even close to the strike zone. But Roger Clemens has got some outstanding stuff tonight. Leadoff man Bobby Higginson coming up for the second time around. In the first inning, he bounced the second to Fry. Bobby looks at an inside pitch, ball one. In fact, uh, Roger Clemens is now 17th on the all time strikeout list, just passing Jerry Kuzman, Ernie. Take it deep, Roger! One and one on Higginson. Big guy has the record for strikeouts in one game, nine inning game, 20. There's a pitch in too close. Two and one, the count on Bobby. Two out, nobody on, no score. Fouled away. That will reach the seats on the third base side. Didn't get much wood on it. Well, that was a good shot of that fastball and the live action on it. He's just a remind you of a, of a, a hitter that has a what we call a live bat. He has a live arm. The ball leaves his hand when he has his good stuff that like explodes on the hitter. 
Two to the count on Higginson. Now the full count. Full count, baby, don't miss. Alan Trammell, the only Tiger with a hit waiting on deck. 3 2 pitch. Fouled away. Mark Lewis not at the ballpark. Remember, he was hit in the back of the head last night. Suffered a concussion. He's staying home. We want to wish him the best. Hope he's uh, back in action real soon. We sure do. He is a tough egg, and he is missed here at Tiger Stadium tonight. Seven for Clemens, and at the end of three, the game still scoreless. Well, it has been a dandy, uh, Justin Thompson, matching pitches with the veteran Roger Clemens. It's nothing, nothing as we go to the fourth inning, and Jose Conseco are back on the active list last night. We'll lead off for the Boston's in the fourth. First time up, he bounced to third. And he takes the ball low. And they have the Conseco shift on. Three infielders on the left side. Nevin Fryman and Trammell now all on the left side of the infield. High fly ball hit deep to the right. The ABs are going back, looking at the fence, and makes a catch right in front of the barrier. It was close. <laughs> I tell you what, I was watching Ken Seiko, and I think he thought that was out of here because he went into his home run trot. We were telling you about the win. The win definitely knocked this ball down as we take a look at Nieves going back, back, and catches it with a lot of room to spare, partner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Another look at it. It almost got that overhang, but under normal conditions, that ball would have been trouble. Look at the big guy. He thinks it's out of here. Look, I told you he went into the home run trot right away. There's a high foul off the <laughs> bat of Valentin in the seats in right field for a strike. Well, that's one thing you can't do, go into that trot until you're sure it's out of here, right? <laughs> no runs, two hits for Boston. No runs, one hit for the Tigers. We're in the fourth inning at Tiger Stadium. There's a line drive to center. Here comes Barty, but he's got to play this one on one hop. A single for Valentin. Boy, I tell you what. Third Boston hit. I love that aggressiveness of Kamira Barty. He thinks everything hit out there he can make the play on, and uh, he uh, put the brakes on. But uh, he has a lot of confidence out there. This is a line shot. Kamira at first thinks he can make the play. You see him, and then he says, "No way, a guy can make it." But boy, I love that aggressiveness by Kamira Barty. Here's Greenwell, who struck out in the second against uh, Justin Thompson. Justin's had a couple of strikeouts. He's walked one. Mound allowed uh, three hits, all of them singles. Closing in on Frank Malzones. You remember Frank? Absolutely. Third sacker. Big curve over. I tell you that curveball is good against right-handers, let alone left-handers. I tell you, Mike Greenwell froze on this one, but look at went down 11 inches. Boy, that I like I told you, he has a good one tonight. Give you an idea how good his curveball is tonight. I think Greenwell was looking for the curveball and still unable to hit it. That time it went down 10 inches. Watch, Mike doesn't pull away. He's looking for it, but he just couldn't catch up with it. 
That's the pitch that struck him out the first time. Two strikes on him now. Boston got a man all the way to third. The Tigers have had a man only as far as second of eight so far. But the bottom line is that neither team has scored. Strike two pitch to Greenwell. Fast ball under the hands, one and two. Mike out a good part of the season. Especially in the earlier months. Digging in now waiting on a one two pitch. Fouled away. Oh, he's been a solid player for the Red Sox for a long time. Mike Greenwell. Really a, one of the nice guys too. Trying to keep Valentin close over there in this one out situation. Well, they scoreless. He got ahead in the count. He came inside with the fastball. Watch Osmus and you see where he goes. It'll give you an indication. They're going to try the fastball again inside. Now let's see if they switch up the location. Greenwell had a chance to see where Osmus is set up. See if he goes away this time. There he does. He goes away. Two to the count on Greenwell with a man out on the man out. That's a little cat and mouse uh, game that Buddy likes to put on with a runner on first. When they throw over, that hitter can kind of glance down and see where the catcher is, and then they, they switch up on the next pitch, which they did that time. A little chopper foul down past the first base. Still 2 2 on Greenwell, a man out and the man out, game scoreless. This game starting out is one in which one run might loom very large. Foul away, that's another curve. Each of those pitch, each of the pitchers here tonight, with outstanding uh, stuff. Uh, Thompson uh, dealing 2-2. Base hit, right field. Valentin holds it second, and the Red Sox are kicking up their heels a little bit now. They've got two men on and one man down. Well, that was a good uh, battle that time between Thompson and Mike Greenwell, and that time Greenwell uh, won. Here it is, the fastball that he stayed on and pulled it by Trammell at second base. So that was a good at bat by Mike Greenwell. Two on for Boston, no score, fourth inning. They've got one man down for Rudy Pemberton. Rudy just brought up from Pawtucket. Not a single his first time at bat. He takes the curve outside from Thompson. No runs, four hits for the Red Sox. No runs and one hit for Detroit. No errors in the game. Infield a double played up for the Tigers. And it's 2-0. And Osmus wants to go out and uh, talk with his uh, pitcher. Talking about fastballs, Johnny Bench was uh, catching uh, Jerry Arrigo at uh, Cincinnati, and Arrigo was pitching against the Dodgers, wanted to throw fastballs all the time. And uh, Bench kept signaling for curves, and Arrigo wouldn't uh, throw him. He wanted to throw the fastball, and he finally, Johnny said, "Okay, go ahead and throw your fastball." He reached up and caught it with his bare hand. <laughs> Put him in his place. Boy, you're not kidding. That tells you what type of fastball he had, huh? <laughs> Yeah. 
And in cutting in that one, a two and one, the count on Pemberton. Fastball that time away from Pemberton, probably out of the strike zone just a little bit, but good velocity on it. Piles it away, reached out on that outside fastball, got a piece of it back with the screen. Here are the runners at second base, it's Valentin. And at first base, it's Greenwell. Pemberton out of the Dominican Republic, signed by the Tigers as a free agent. Came through their system. Before he left, there's a foul out of play. Brad Osmus with uh, the ball bounced back, and Brad threw it right back up there in the upper deck. Brad was telling <laughs> us before the game, I'm going to do that. I'm, the guys in the upper deck, he said, never get a baseball from anybody. And I'm going to uh, go upper deck tonight, and he did it. Yeah, he did. Remember when Darnell Coles did it yeah. <laughs> in another situation? Yes. Of a 2 2 pitch. Pemberton, it's a little soft fly down the line. Maybe trouble. Dropping in for a base hit. Valentin racing around third. He's coming home. They throw to second. Does not get Pemberton. It gets away from travel and rounding third and coming home is Greenwell. And on to third goes Pemberton. And the Red Sox have a 2 0 lead over the Tigers here in the fourth. Well, that's too bad because that was a good pitch in on the hands of Pemberton, and he was able to bloop it down the right field line uh, in no man's land, and a couple of runs scored on a, a ball that uh, nobody had a chance to catch. Here you see Tony Clark, Melvin Nieves going over. Now Nieves will throw it into second base. The ball will hit the runner Pemberton and get away from him, and that will allow the second run to score. Mike Greenwell scoring on that play. So it'll be scored as a hit, one RBI, an error to the right fielder, a knee Avis for the errant throw. And they pitch to Bill Hasselman as a ball high. The Tigers bring their infield in. Man at third, one out for Boston. They've got a 2 0 lead. Outside of third, that was very close to being a two base hit. Ernie, I have to believe that outfielders get more errors on throwing errors like that by hitting the runner than any other play. In fact, Al Kaline and I were talking the other day about that, and he felt that uh, most of the errors that he got were on a throw into third base where it would hit the runner in the back or coming into home. And uh, that's really kind of unfortunate because a lot of times, as Ernie cleans up his scorecard, a lot of times they're good throws and they have to, they pay the penalty for making a good throw. And that throw from the Avas was not that all of a bad throw. It just happened to hit the runner, but it was on the area that you want it to be. Right. The penalty is always goes to the outfielder, though. Are you okay, partner? I'm fine. I get your towel and <laughs> spill water. At least it wasn't coke or something <laughs> sticky. But it is still wet. Believe me. First time you've ever done that, is it? <laughs> <laughs> First time in a couple of days. There's a cut and a miss. One and two on Hasselman. Good curve that time from Justin. Another good breaking ball once again down 10 inches. He fouls this one away. <laughs> you can use my scorecard. Oh, I'm okay. I'll <laughs> right. make it. Here is the pitch. Just miss the outside corner with that one. Austin in the lead, two nothing. Man at third, one man down for them, and the curve stays away. Three two on Hasselman. That's the man at third, Pemberton. 
Justin Thompson at times will throw two different type curveballs. That last one was one that he tries to throw straight over the top. It has more down action. He also throws another one that has some down action and also goes into the right handed hitter. There's a base hit to right through the drawn in infield. Boston gets its third run and ups its lead to three to nothing here in the fourth inning. Four straight base hits off young Mr. Thompson. And that'll bring out the pitching coach Rick Adair to talk to Justin. Well that's always a hitter's dream with the infield in and one down a runner at third. All the angles are uh, opened up to you just have to hit it sharply and you can usually punch it through there just like Hasselman did. Jim the uh, Tiger outfielders have made an unusual number of errors. I don't have the uh, total. But for instance that uh, Nieves has made 12. And a lot of them that have been here and gone have made uh, their share too of errors yeah. before they left. They really have. You saw that pitch, that last pitch that Hasselman hit. It was a fastball away. Didn't try to pull it and hit it by Trammell at second base. Now it'll be Bragg, the number nine hitter, coming to bat. Where they man it first, one out, three nothing lead for the Boston Red Sox. They've picked up all three. Here in the fourth inning of Jason Thompson. And the big curve is down in the way. Ball one. Oh, he's been hitting well of late, but he really got severely jammed his first time up. Two and all oh, the count on Bragg. Infield again in the double play depth of the Tigers. And it's ball three. And we're getting a little stirring now. Uh, down in the Tiger bullpen for the first time tonight. It's like C.J. Nikowski. Starting to limber up. It's a walk. Ball four. That'll put two men on. It's the second walk allowed by Justin. And it brings up the top of the batting order. Jeff Fry. Fry up for the third time. The first two times he popped the second and then struck out. Takes the ball, low ball one. True and oh, and Osmus is going to walk the ball back to his pitcher. Well, this has been a tough inning for the youngster. He got Canseco on that long drive to right center, and then after that, four straight base hits and then another walk. The big blow that uh, Texas League doubled down the right field line Ernie off the bat of Pemberton. That was the one it wasn't hit very well but it got in. There's a strike call two and one. <laughs> Fry is the seventh Boston batter in here in this inning. There's a pop up into the infield. The infield fly rule called. Trammell puts it away. Two down and uh, got He has walked and fly to center. Oh, Justin trying to get out of uh, further trouble. It's a strike called. He got the outside corner above the knee. Boston three, Tigers nothing. Boston batting in the fourth. 
Trying to get some more with two on and two out. Fouled away. That'll be upstairs. Hasselman is the runner at second. Bragg's the runner at first base. <laughs> Strike to the count. Got him with a curve, but it's a tough inning for Thompson. Boston gets three. The Tigers bat in the fourth inning. Red Sox lead him 3 nothing. There's the skipper, Buddy Bell, with Ron Oster, his bench coach. Tigers come to bat trailing 3 0 in the <laughs> Trammell to lead off. He has the only Detroit hit off Roger Clemens. He singled in the first and then stole second. <laughs> only Detroit runner. Roger has struck out seven. So seven of the first nine outs have been on strikeouts. The other two have bounced to short and have bounced <laughs> to second. Quite a career against Clemens. <laughs> Who looks at a strike. It's amazing how certain uh, hitters can hit certain pitchers, Ernie, no matter what type of stuff they have. That's true, and the opposite is true, too. Certain yes. pitchers can get out right. to certain hitters that they probably shouldn't get out. That's right. <laughs> Babe Ruth had a nemesis named Hub Pruitt. Of Hub Pruitt? St. Louis Browns. Couldn't hit him. Could not get him. Huh? Little left-handed. Did he go? No, he did not. That's the ball, says Mr. Cheetah. Probably gave the babe a lot of jump. Yeah, I'll see if Tram went. Okay. Trying to get out of the way of it. Got a little break there. Two on the count on the Tiger veteran. A chopper hit the second. Fry fires to Vaughn in time. He got him. Now it'll be Ruben Sierra. Ruben uh, struck out. This is his second time at bat. A strike to Sierra. Notice CJ Nikowski still warming up in the Tiger bullpen. Sometimes that's an indication that a change might be made. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Little chop foul on the ground down toward first base. Two strikes to count on uh, Sierra. Sierra was a right-hand hitter when he first started. But his second year in organized ball in the instructional league became a switch hitter. Two strikes. High and wide of one and two. Three runs, six hits, no errors for Boston. Detroit, no runs, one hit and one error. We're in the fourth inning at Tiger Stadium. <coughs> two, two. Boy, that baby is dancing. Uh, it's amazing. Ruben could stay off of that one, but that split finger really had a lot of action on it. Full count. Clemens missing that outside corner. Well, what's he going to give him now, Jim? I think he'll probably challenge him with the old fastball. He did, and he got him. 
Ruben is out for excessive window shopping. He looked at one too many. Well, Ruben did not like the call, but we'll take another look at it. It looked like a good pitch on the outside part of the plate. Well, you can see it was high enough, that's for sure. Looked like a good pitch. Just an overpowering fastball. Then he came back with good location on the fastball. Eight strikeouts for Roger Clemens. Two down. Here's Tony Clark taking the cut. Clark struck out to end the first inning. There's a high one, one and one. See, like he might be coming in. Out. Fouled away, one and two on Tony Clark. The inside corner that time, but not by much. <laughs> that was close. I'll tell you what, all his pitches have been, uh, if they if they miss, they're not missing by much. And there's a lot of action on his fastball tonight and split finger. 2-2 two, two count, two out, nobody on. And another strike. Nine. Mr. Clemens as he continues to mow down the Detroit hitters. At the end of four, Boston on top, three to zero. Well, Big Ten football action coming your way this Saturday at 10.30. It's the Michigan State Spartans playing Louisville. So the Spartans in action against the Louisville Cardinal. That's 10.30 on Saturday night. C.J. Nikowski takes over for Thompson. C.J. two and three in the year with a high ERA. He is only pitched. 32 and struck out 29. He last pitched the 13th of this month, a month against Baltimore. He went two and two thirds innings. He gave up a couple hits. He walked three and he struck out two. And here's the big man he'll be facing, Big Mo. Look at the rankings by Big Mo. 326 average in 10th place, 40 run home runs at sixth, 134 runs driven in third, and 191 hits fourth. What a year for offense, Ernie. Mo is up for two tonight against the starting pitcher Thompson now faces Christopher John Nikowski here in the fifth inning Boston on top three nothing they've overshifted again against the Mo Vaughn. I wonder if it goes through his mind just to push one down towards third you know if, he's, if he thinks about it all up there. Here's a 1 0 delivery and he hits one that way but it bobbled by Nevin and he picks it up in time. To get Mo Vaughn. I started to write down six to three, but really it's uh, five to three. <laughs> yep, that's where it's got to be. He was a third baseman, but he was really over there at the shortstop post. Here comes uh, Conseco, who's gone 0 for two. He bounced the third and hit a long fly to right. Well, the ball was hit so hard right at Phil Nevin, moved over at shortstop. Uh, no problem getting Mo at first base. Nikowski gets his first man now pitches to Conseco who takes an inside fastball. <laughs> Had to move the family from Havana. Conseco was about a year old. There's a pitch in for a strike. Had a twin brother that played a little bit. Now I understand he's an agent. Huh? Oh, is he? Yeah, that's the easy way out, isn't yep. it now? <laughs> That amazing when you think about it a twin brother as a professional baseball player the other one just did not have the talent to make it both up in the big leagues for a short time two on the count on Jose 
And Nikowski's low with this one, three and one. But when you look back at Canseco's career and all the numbers he put up offensively, but the stolen bases, you know, just a complete all. <laughs> Going to take that one back into the seats. Foul up above the dugout. Man from Southgate. He's got that one now. Well, Boston got three off the starting pitcher Thompson, all coming in the fourth inning. Pembleton followed by the error. Throwing error by right fielder Nieves. And Seiko. There's a drive up the gap in left center. Higginson goes over, plays it on the hop, and it's a long single for Conseco. The seventh Boston hit. Well, the muscle man himself, not a big stride at all. You see how short that stride was, but he is so strong. Higgy over to cut it off. John Valentin at the plate now. John's had to pop the short in a single ground ball at the short. Ryman to Trammell, one relay to Clark, two for the price of one for the Tigers. A double play ends the Boston fifth inning. Tigers bat last half of the fifth, three nothing Red Sox. It is time to recap the ball game scoring and is brought to you by Fago Beverages. When was the last time you had a good slug of Red Pop? Well, all Boston so far in this game. In the fourth inning, Rudy Pemberton with a fly ball down the right field line. That was a double and two runs scored on that play with the error. The Aves picking up the error, hitting Pemberton as he went into second base. That made it two to nothing. Still in the fourth inning, drawn in. And Pemberton at third, Hasselman with an RBI to right field through the drawn in infield. That made it three to nine. Half of inning number five. Well, Jim, you were talking about errors. I want to tell you a story about errors. Kid Ebblefield, who played with the Tigers in 1901 at shortstop, made 76 errors in the season. He played in 121 games. His keystone partner, Kid Gleason, made. 64 errors and he played in the 135 games. I bet you they were <laughs> the team uh, <laughs> 10 <laughs> Jesus. and the first baseman uh, pop Dylan played in only 74 games. He made 18 errors at first base. They were not atop the rankings uh, defensively. <laughs> I, I, no. I take it. No they were last. Well they I, if they had a road trip they had to put those boys on the uh, the ground floor so they didn't uh, jump out. <laughs> You're not kidding. Jeez. That made for a long season for pitchers, didn't it? It did. Probably the pitch. <laughs> believe it. Fryman at the bat now. He fouled off that first one. And the third baseman, uh, Doc Clancy, uh, made 58 errors. I forgot about him. Hey, well, he had a better year. Yeah. <laughs> but that was in 127 games. Oh, my goodness. One and one, the count on Travis. The Tigers trailing 3 nothing. One ball, two strikes on the Tiger shortstop. Sliders I've seen from Clemens in this ball game. Two of them to Travis now. He struck him out the first time they met in uh, this game. Nine strikeouts for Clemens. There's a <laughs> the facing of the upper deck, and then down below. You're watching a master at work tonight. Roger Clemens has his. Whole arsenal on target tonight. Good fastball, split finger, you name it, he's got it. He's allowed to by travel in the It's a strike called, and Fryman is uh, called out for looking at one too many. Well, he starts another streak. That's three Tigers in a row. Fastball on the outside part of the plate. Had some movement on it. Travis thought it may have gone around the plate. He gives a little bit of an argument. Ten strikeouts. His high this year is 11. He pitched the game against Oakland. He won two to one Six. and had 11 strikeouts. Well, look at that. And eight of those against the Tigers. There's a top foul in the dirt.
Melvin Nieves, he struck out in the second inning. Oh. Two strikes. I'll tell you, Ernie, I haven't seen uh, this good of stuff in a long time from a pitcher. Everything he's throwing up there is exploding. <laughs> Movement is late, tough for the hitters to pick up. Catch. <laughs> Off the mid of Hasselman, one and two now. Three nothing, Boston on top. Tigers are batting in the fifth inning. They've got one down and the bases are empty. And he got him with a hard stuff again. That's number. And this little streak. Is Well, he's making it look easy. The fastball about belt high right down the middle. Once again, Tiger batter swings right through the pitch. Now watch how late he was. Did you see where the ball was when he swung even with him? That gives you an idea how hard Clemens is throwing tonight. Here's Phil Nevin. He struck out his first time. And he's swinging strike one. Well, starting with the number three hitter, Sierra Clark. Fryman and Nieves, all of them have struck out twice in two attempts. Uh, Nevin is uh, struck out once and he's up for the second time. And he's got two strikes on him now. Well, I'll tell you what, this is like the. Uh, the man. It's just overpowering these guys. Split finger, watch it drop, not near the strike zone. Two strikes a count on him. He fouls this one away. Way back in the right field corner. Still two strikes. Well, that shows you the confidence Clemens has tonight ahead in the count. Went right after him with the fastball, 0-2. Uh, He's not walked anybody. He's allowed only one hit. 3-0, Boston on top, fifth inning. One ball, two strikes on Phil Nevin. American League strikeout leader, Mr. Clemens, doing it tonight. Oh. And he gets another one. One, two, three, all on strikeouts. Go the Tigers, and 12 of them have gone down to swinging in the five innings. At the end of five, Boston leads it. Beautiful moon over Motown. 3 7 0 for Boston. The Tigers with only one base hit against Roger Clemens, who has been spectacular here tonight at Tiger Stadium. Is in relief of the starter, Justin Thompson. But the story of this one is Roger Clemens. There's no question about it. He has dominated. Mike Greenwell will lead off against the Tiger left-hander. And Mike takes a strike call. He has fanned and uh, singled. Kowski, young man from uh, New York State. As uh, Greenwell swinging and missing uh, two strikes. Greenwell unhappy with himself going after the bad pitch. There it is a cut fastball or a slider. Way out of the strike zone. And the former Cincinnati pitcher delivers outside one and two. He makes his home now in Pennsylvania in Milford. But is a native of the state of New York. Here's the one two pitch. It's the wide one, the two two on Greenwell. Three runs, seven hits for the Red Sox, no runs, one hit for the Tigers. We're in the sixth inning. Here's a foul oh. of play. Watch it. Baby, I thought it had us. Getting closer and closer. Oh. 
Partner, I had you all the way. I was going. I was bailing out to the right. <laughs> Every man for themselves tonight, baby. You're not kidding. <laughs> man the lifeboat. Two two count. Oh baby. It's a full count. Trammell, the Tigers second baseman, couldn't quite reach it. Mike gets his second hit of the night. And the next two batters are both hitters who have two hits apiece. Pemberton and then Hasselman to follow him. Pemberton has had a single and a double. The double, the only extra base hit of the game. Pemberton having a good night against his former mates. Ernie, the thing I remember about Pemberton, very strong, but he was more or less a sweep hitter. Didn't mm -hmm. release the bat head. He swings, hits one deep into left center. Barty on the run, makes the catch at the warning track. The wind held that one up. And back to first goes Greenwell. He struck it pretty good, but Barty and the wind did him in. Yeah, Pemberton, as I said, very strong. But if it's in the uh, cow yard, Tamir Barty can track him down. That'll bring the bat uh, Bill Hasselman, the catcher, who's had uh, two singles and two trips to move his average to 270. And Bill takes a curve in for a strike. 3 0, Boston on top. They got all three off the starter, Justin Thompson, in the fourth inning. That's outside and uh, low one and one. You look back on the game Ernie that uh, bloop double by Pemberton. If, if he doesn't get that bloop double it might have been a different ball game for the Tigers and, and uh, Justin might still be in there. Could could be very different. Here's a fly ball at the right. The Aves are going back to the warning track. We'll put it away. A couple of outfield outs after the leadoff single and uh, now we see the ninth man in the batting order. For Mr. Kevin Kennedy, it'll be Darren Bragg, who has bounced to the pitcher and drawn a base on ball. Three nothing Boston leads. There goes the runner. Big jump. Here's Osnes throw. It won't be in time. He's got a steal. That's just a case of CJ forgetting about the runner at first base and the veteran Mike Greenwell not uh, just certainly doesn't have blazing speed but uh, knows how to get the jump. Look at the jump he gets. That delivery to the plate really made that for Mike Greenwell. Bragg waiting on a 1 0 delivery. Takes a low one a 2 0 the count on Darren Bragg. Another Georgia Tech product, and out on deck is uh, the leadoff man Fry. 2 0 pitch. He got the corner, 2 and 1. Wide with this one. Three one the count. High fly down into the left field corner. Higginson chases and uh, makes the catch. At the end of five and a half, Red Sox three, Tags nothing.
Well, the master is back out on the mound as he continue his continues his warm up tosses, but he has been. Ernie, I don't know. Uh, we've said so many superlatives tonight, but uh, he's like the Roger of old. With overpowering fastball that split finger that he just recently developed has really been dancing for him and last inning through a couple sliders but for the most part fastballs and split fingers tonight. The last uh, four innings have uh, gone uh, one two three that is from the second through the fifth. He set down the 14 straight batters. He struck out a total of 12 in the five innings. And here's Osmus who bounced to short one of the few Tigers who is not fan tonight. He bounced to short his first time up. Ball won the count on Brad. Three runs, eight hits, no errors for Boston. The Tigers, no runs, one hit, and one error. That one hit was a single by Trammell in the first inning. Hmm. One and one. Now, Roger has not walked anybody. So, Trammell has been the only runner. And that was an infield hit. Mm -hmm. Here's the 1 1 pitch to Osmus. 2 and 1. Not been behind on many hitters, said Jim. Now he's done everything by the book tonight. Fouled away off the foot of the catcher, Hasselman, 2 2. Up until now, this is a video that Roger Clemens would love to keep in his library because, you know, Ernie, even in his heyday, I'm just trying to think eh, when he could have been even better than he has been tonight. Well, that 20 strikeouts against Seattle, I guess, might have been a little bit better. Right. But there's, who knows, he yeah. may top that tonight. You can never tell. Here's a high hard one. And one of the few full counts we've seen uh, with Clemens on the mound tonight. A little chopper hit toward third. It'll bounce foul. Hey, the only thing you can try to do against a pitcher like this that uh, is throwing so hard is, you know, choke up a little bit, shorten your stroke, tell yourself to be a little bit quicker. Don't take uh, your normal stride, shorten your stride, just try to lay the bat on the ball. Full count pitch. Fouled away. Osmus got one in tight on him. Clemens ratio per game per game to lead the league. Now those two, Kevin Apia and Roger. There's a looping drive to left, a base hit. Oslis makes a big turn. He's on with the second hit for Detroit. Well, that stops the streak of 14 straight that the Clemens had retired since that first inning single by Trammell. Well, Osmus had time another good at bat. Didn't hit the ball hard, but uh, as Ernie said, he looped it in the left field for a base hit. Osmus and Trammell are the only Tigers who have not uh, struck out against Clemens. Marti at the plate and the third baseman, Ballenden in close. The runner goes, and it will be a steal for Osmus on a strike. Second time tonight, Hasselman had a problem getting the ball out of his glove. Now, Hasselman is certainly not one of the better throwers. He relies on a quick release and accuracy. Well, each time the Tigers have had a man on, they've had a steal of second base. Yeah. Well, I think that's because of Hasselman. Double trouble, Kamira Barty last night, two for three, a double and a single, and also a sacrifice bunt. 3 nothing, Boston in the lead. The Tigers for the second time tonight have a man at second base. 
They have not had one any farther than second. Strike one to Barty. There's strike two on Kim Barty. Well, he has been deadly with that pitch tonight. That fastball low and away from a right-handed hitter, and the angle that it comes at the hitter just makes it very difficult. There's been some talk, Jim, that Barty might switch hit in the game in the yes. in the final week here. Yeah, Buddy has mentioned that early on, and uh, why not? What the heck? He's been working on it a lot in batting practice and in the batting cages. Another strikeout. Number 13 for Roger Clemens. Well, another strikeout for Roger. Once again, the split finger. You see that baby dance? Now remember, it looks like a fastball until it gets right in front of the plate and then it dips out of the strike zone. Bobby Higginson. I was going to say, Ernie, that pitch used to be called a forkball. Now it's yep. a split finger. Same action, just Same a different uh, term, Joe, a matter of semantics. That's right. Joe Coleman had played with the Tigers, had a good forkball. Elroy Face was here just for a short time. At the end of his career, of course, lived with his forkball all those years. That's Osmus at second, a one down. The Tigers trail 3 nothing. Fouled away by Higginson, one and one on Bobby. Bobby batting in the cleanup spot tonight. There's a strike delivered by Mr. Clemens. I tell you, two. When you watch him work tonight. Not only does he have that good stuff, but he continues to hit those good spots. That was an outstanding pitch. He's ahead on the count with a Bobby Higginson. One ball, two strikes. One out, Osmus at second. Oh. And he's 14 in the strikeout. The second out of the sixth inning. I'll tell you what, folks, you're watching one of the best split finger fastballs you will ever see here tonight at Tiger Stadium. Here's Alan Trammell now. Tram along with Osmus, the only Tigers who have not fanned. Well, let's see now. He's gotten uh, Sierra twice. He's gotten Higginson twice, Clark twice, Fryman twice, Niebius twice, Nevin twice, and Barty twice. <laughs> Tram uh, looks at the ball low. You can't get this guy, Roger! Two out, one on. Tigers trail, three nothing. They shade Tram on the outfield uh, towards right. Bragg, the center fielder, a uh, good bit over towards right and very shallow, very shallow. A little foul hit over to the on deck circle. Take a look at Bragg over to the right and very shallow for Alan Trammell. Left fielder Greenwell shallow and Pemberton in right. One and one, they count on Tram. Trying to keep it going in the uh, Tigers sixth inning. Clemens uh, delivers wide at two and one. You got no juice left, buddy. Clemens is second in the league and uh, walks allowed, but he has not walked the man yet. One of the few times he's been behind on the count. Travel waiting on a 3 1 delivery. And it'll be 3 2. A split finger on a three and one right down the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see that again. <laughs> Look like Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Now Tram digging in on the three two delivery. Fouls it away.
There goes Osmus, and the ball's fouled away. Oh, Chamo's given him uh, more trouble than just about anybody. Yes, he has. He's, in fact, his whole career he's giving was, uh, Clemens as much trouble probably as anybody has. Outstanding lifetime batting average against him. Al in waiting on the three and two from the rocket. Them. No runs and one hit, one man left. We go to the seventh inning. Boston three, Detroit nothing. Roger Clemens last strikeout. Look at the catcher and watch the target, and you watch the pitch. How good is that? And Tram knows it takes his medicine. Boy, that is just an out another outstanding pitch. He continues to hit that corner low and away against right-handers. Don't forget now, coming up Thursday, September 26th at 7.30, it's preseason hockey. The Red Wings against, you has got it, the New Jersey Devils, only on Passports. That's Thursday, September 26th at 7.30. The Wings and the Devils. Mm. Seventh inning, the Boston lead it 3 nothing. Steve Fry will lead it off for the visitors. There's a pitch low on Jeff. I think I said Steve. I got the wrong Fry. It's Jeff Fry. He's 0 for 3 for the night. Breaking ball low, 2 and 0. Oh, the count on him. Three runs, eight hits for Boston. Detroit, no runs and two hits. We're in the seventh inning at Tiger Stadium. There's a strike called. Boy, and Roger Clemens has overshadowed uh, C.J. Nikowski's done a fine job since he's come in the ball game. Kept the Red Sox off the board. Fry takes one wide. Three one the count on him. He walked him. It's a leadoff walk for Jeff Fry. It's the first walk allowed by CJ. Garcia Parra will be the batter. He's walked, fly to center, and struck out swinging. It's the ball outside. Boston got all three runs in this game in the fourth inning. A one out single by Valentin. And Greenwell single in the second. Pemberton got the key hit, a little uh, flare that dropped into short right field for a double. And when uh, Nieves threw the ball away, two runs were able to score. Pebbleton took third and then he scored on a single by Hasselman. It's the ball outside on Garcia Para. Eight thousand seven seventy nine the number of tickets sold for the game tonight. The 2 0 pitch not forthcoming. He'll deal over to first base. Well, the big story tonight is Mr. Clemens. There's no question about that. Through six innings, he has struck out 15 Tigers. Three and all the count now on Garcia Para. Well, CJ has walked the man and is close to issuing another pass here in the Boston seventh and he delivers it high so that's uh, back to back walks to start the seventh inning for Boston. Mm -hmm. 
And pitching coach Rick Adair out to talk to CJ. I must have jinxed him. I said that he's done a fine job since he came in. The minute I said it, he walks two batters. Looked like he was guiding those uh, pitches, uh, Ernie. You can't do that if you're a pitcher. You got to st uh, stay within yourself and throw with that fluid motion. You start guiding the ball, you're going to get yourself in trouble. And that is what has happened here with C.J. Nikowski walking the first two batters here in the seventh inning. Tigers announced a trade today uh, with the Padres. Right-handed uh, pitcher Fernando Hernandez is coming to Detroit for exchange for a minor league player to be named later. Uh, Hernandez, 25, was 11 and 10 with a 4.64 ERA at the Padres Double A Memphis affiliate. He placed fourth in the league with 161 strikeouts and he limited the opposition to a 2.33 batting average. Well, it's Mo Vaughn now at the bat. Mo has gone 0 for 3 tonight, and it's a base hit to left field. Here comes Fry around third. He'll be held there. The bases are loaded. Two walks and a single have loaded them for the Red Sox. Little surprise that the third base coach held up Jeff Fry. You know, Boston showing respect for Higgy's arms, but uh, arm in the outfield. But that ball was pretty deep by the time he picked it up, and Fry with good speed. Mo jumps on the first pitch line drive to left field. Now watch where Higgy gets it. That's pretty deep by the time he gets the ball. And again Jeff Fry held up at third base Higgy with the throw in to Phil Nevin the cutoff man. So that will bring to bat Conseco with the bases loaded. He's had a bounce to third a fly to right and a single. Well, they're trying to buy a little time for A.J. Sager, who started to throw down in the Tiger bullpen. Boy, two walks and a base hit, and just like that, the base is loaded, nobody out. And we're right in the thick part of the Boston batting order, the cleanup man, Conseco. Mo Vaughn single was the ninth Boston hit. <laughs> Here comes Buddy Bell out, and he'll be calling for the right-hander. It'll be A.J. Sager coming on for Detroit. And we'll take a break and tell you about A.J. after this timeout. A.J. Sager with a three and four record takes over for 502 ERA. He has pitched 66 and a third innings. He's walked 27 and he struck out 44. Now he hasn't pitched since the 12th of this month when he worked worked against the Yankees. He went two and a third innings gave up two hits one earned run. He walked two and he struck out two. Sager with a good sinker ball and a slider. Well, five career grand slams for Mr. Conseco, and he's in that spot now where he could make it number six. Bases loaded. And it's ball one to Jose from the new pitcher, Sager. That's Fry at third. Gussie Parrott, second base. Vaughn at first. Boston in the lead, 3-0. Ground ball to third, gloved by Nevin, and the throw to the plate, and he got him. And he got him at third, too, didn't he? Yeah, he sure did. Double that was play. a nifty play. A Taylor made double play ball, and Nevin had the forethought to catch the ball. Now, watch him catch the ball, step on the bag to force the runner, get the play to the plate, and fries a dead duck at home plate. Taylor made double play ball. So Valentin will be the batter now with runners at first and second and two down. He looks at a strike call. So Mr. Sega got two in a hurry Jim. Boy he sure did. That's that sinker ball. 
able to get Conseco to hit the ball on the ground perfectly to Nevin at third. Easy double play. One and one the count. Greenwell waiting on deck. Ballenden at the plate now. One one the count on John. There's a little looper. Short hop by Fryman. Good play. Throw to first and the Tigers get out of deep trouble in the seventh inning. They come to bat in the seventh. Boston ahead three nothing. Welcome back. The seventh inning stretch storyline is brought to you by Ladbroke DRC for setting the pace in Michigan horse racing. Well, it's really Roger Clemens. That's the storyline. Brad Osmus, the only Tiger not to strike out. Clemens, six innings, two hits, 15 strikeouts. Justin Thompson started for the Tigers. Another tough outing, four innings, six hits, two earned runs. He walked two and he struck out three. It is Roger Clemens night with 15 strikeouts. All those K's, uh, 15 of them. That's the most in any uh, one game uh, this year in the American League by any pitcher. In the Major League, uh, record for the year is uh, Hideo Nomo of the Dodgers. He struck out 17 in the game against the Florida Marlins back in April. Mr. Clemens has uh, victimized everybody except Osmond. And he's had at least two strikeouts in every inning. He's had the three strikeouts in the three of the six innings. Wow. He's had two in the other three innings apiece. So here's Ruben Sierra to test him in the seventh. Sierra has struck out twice. The man who is scheduled to follow Clark and then the next one, the Fryman. Each one of those has also struck out twice. Well, that was a long inning for Roger as the Red Sox loaded the bases but uh, I don't think it'll have any effect on uh, Big Roger. I remember a game here when uh, Nolan Ryan pitches no hitter and uh, he struck out about uh, 17 and he had a great string going and there was a big inning uh, by the Angels his own team and he wasn't quite as effective yeah. when he had to sit on the bench. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because that's really why I said that because sometimes you know Roger's working real fast tonight. He's uh, He's in his rhythm and sometimes you sit there in a cool night even though he's sure he was bundled up or maybe he went back in the locker room. Sometimes you can throw you out of your rhythm. Sierra hits a ground ball to second. For Fry and Sierra is out. One up and one down three nothing Boston leads it in the seventh and Tony Clark will be the Tiger batter. Tony is struck out to end the first inning he struck out to end the fourth inning. That hurt my ears up here, Ernie. <laughs> that, that sound of the catcher's mitt. Watch Tony go after the high hard one. No chance. Ball was by him. Strike one, the count on Clark. 15 strikeouts for Clemens. He's got a 3 0 lead over the Tigers. One and one, the count on Tony. Well, like I said, on a night like this, you just got to shorten up that stroke and. Uh, just tell yourself I've got to be a little quicker. I've got to be a little quicker. Come on, Tony. Come on, man. Give me number 23. One and two, the count on Tony Clark. Three. Tony, come on. Well, we told you the major league record for strikeouts is 20, set by Roger Clemens himself against Seattle. Well, a couple fastballs above the belt. Then the split finger out of the strike zone below the knees. Here it is. Watch this baby dance. Goodbye.
I understand, Tony. Fryman at the plate. He struck out a couple of times, and uh, there's a strike. Clark becomes the first Tiger to strike out three times tonight. That's because some of the others haven't been up three times. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Two down, nobody on three, nothing. Red Sox lead. Uh, Fryman cuts and misses at uh, two strikes. Clemens now going for strikeout number 17. Here with two down in the seventh inning. Look at that, no flyouts tonight. <laughs> Lots of strikeouts, four ground outs. Oh my goodness! It's the ball, the one and two. They count on Travis. You almost get the feeling that uh, a lot of the fans here are uh, rooting for more strikeouts, sir. I think that's true. Two down, nobody on. He just missed for that one, 2-2. Two -two. Well, watch for the split finger this time. This is the pitch he wants to get him on. There. 17 strikeouts for Roger Clemens in seven innings. Three away from tying the record. We go to the eighth. Boston leads 3 0. Well, 3 9 and 0, 0 2 and 1. What a night for Roger Clemens. 17 strikeouts. Here it is, the split finger. Watch it dance. No chance. And Travis's reaction. All right, let's catch you up around uh, the other scores around Major League Baseball. Milwaukee beat the Blue Jays two to one. In New York, they're tied at one apiece with Baltimore in the sixth inning. Cleveland two, Chicago one in the third. And in the fourth inning, Minnesota three, Kansas City one. Later tonight, Texas at Seattle, Oakland's at California. In the National League, Atlanta six, Houston two, Colorado over LA six to four, and San Diego beat San Francisco eight to five. In the seventh, Pittsburgh four, Cincinnati three. Also in the seventh, Montreal three, New York two, and in the fifth, Florida six, Philadelphia two. They're tied at two apiece in St. Louis with the Cubbies in inning number six. Well, Mr. Greenwell will lead it off now against the Sega three nothing. The Red Sox in the lead. They've got three runs, nine hits. The Tigers have no runs and two hits. Here's a strike call. Mr. McClellan said so. Breaking ball on the outside corner. Two quick strikes on the Greenwell. You know, Ernie, Ernie, this is the type of night with what Clemens has gone for him that he's probably in there in the locker room or the dugout wanting to get this inning over with so he can get back out there again. Strike called. He struck him out. Greenwell called out on strikes. Second time tonight that uh, Greenwell has struck out. This is a swing back fastball in the inside part of the plate. Did you see Mike kind of move back but the ball with that swing back motion over for a strike. Now Rudy Pemberton will be the batter. Rudy had a single and a double in the flight to center. He's hit the ball well three times swings at a bouncing ball base hit into the left field corner. He digs around first heads for two Higginson's throw. He is safe. It was close. Pemberton gets his second double of the night. He has three hits and four trips. Well, it's always nice to come back and play against your old team and have a good night. And Rudy Pemberton with his third base hit, he challenges Bobby's arm in left field. If the throw is not up a little bit, he would be out. But watch where Trammell gets the throw, then has to bring the tag down, and Pemberton able to get underneath the tag. He's safe again. Someone at the plate taking and it's a ball in too close on Bill. He singled his first two times and then fly to right. 
been the bottom part of the batting order that's been the damaging part for Boston. They've got a 3 nothing lead over Detroit. In close from A.J. Sager. 2 and 0 oh, the count on Hasselman. the count on him. <laughs> count even 2-2. Two -two. Good breaking ball that time from Sager. at three nothing they're batting in the eighth inning but the big story here tonight is Roger Clemens who through the first seven innings has set down 17 Tigers on strikes he's within three of the major league record that he set himself ten years ago three two now the count on Hasselman For a base hit, here comes Pimpleton. He's being waved around third. He's headed home. There will be no relay. He scores on the RBI single by Hasselman, and Boston makes it a four-nothing lead over the Tigers. <laughs> That'll bring up the number nine hitter, Darren Bragg. Who has the bounce of the pitcher walked and fly to left? Well, that was a sinker ball in on the hands of Hasselman, but he bloop it into center field for a single and an RBI. Infield in double play depth. And the pitch is low. To Bragg, ball one. Bragg's got to be thrilled. This is the first time he's faced a right-hander. He's had to go after Thompson and then uh, CJ. Man on first is Hasselman. Fly ball left field. Higginson is there to glove it. Hasselman stays at first. They are two down, and we come to the top of the batting order. Jeff Fry. Who's had a walk and gone over for three tonight? Boston with four runs, 11 hits, no errors. The Detroiters have no runs, two hits, and they've made one error. We're in the eighth inning of the Red Sox at bat, one out, uh, two out, and one on. Strike called on Fry. That's Hasselman at first. Fry hits a little chopper toward the third. It'll go foul. Saw Ron Oster, the bench coach, flashing some signs to the catcher, Brad Osmus. Two strike count on Fry. 
And Sager gets him. He looks at one too many. At the end of seven and a half, Boston four to short nothing. And there he is, Roger the Dodger. Has thrown nothing but fastballs and split fingers tonight. It'd be interesting after the game to find out how many breaking balls, Ernie, that he has thrown tonight. As we take a look at Lee Tinsley, who's come on to play center field. So Tinsley in center field for Boston now. Clemens with 17 strikeouts. He has uh, six outs to go. If he can uh, master. Four strikeouts in those uh, six outs. He will. He'll break his own break record. His own record. He'll set the new major league record for strikeouts in a nine-inning game. April 29th, 1986, when he set that record. Nieves looking, and it's ball one on Melvin. Nieves is struck out twice in two attempts, and each time it was a call third strike. One and one, the count on Melvin. After Nieves, Phil Nevin. And then uh, Brad Osmus, the only Tiger who is not fan tonight. Strike. One ball, two strikes. Safe at first base. Well, Melvin Hug in there with two strikes on him was able to make contact. The ball gets just under the glove of Mo Vaughn, and Jeff Fry does a good job just knocking it down. So a base hit. No, they're calling that an error on Mo Vaughn. I beg your pardon. Okay. Mo charged with the error. And Nevin will be the batter. He has struck out twice in two turns. It's a strike called on Phil Nevin. Mo had to go a long way to uh, get over for that ball. Got under his glove, and then uh, by the time Fry got it, he didn't have a chance anyway. So the Tigers have a man at first. There's a foul off the mask of Hasselman. Two strikes on Phil Nevin. Tigers have had three runners. Travel single in the first and stole second. That came with one out. Osmus led off the sixth inning with a single in the steal. Boy, that got uh, Hasselman right square in the mask. And that will jar your inners. Two strikes on Nevin. Let alone your fillings. Boston in the lead, four runs, 11 hits, one error. Detroit, no runs, two hits, one error. Tigers have a man on in the eighth inning and nobody down. Base hit in the center field. Now the Tigers, for the first time in the game, have two runners. They've got a man at first and a man at second. And the only man whom Clemens has not fanned is coming to bat. That's Osmus. And that is the first base hit by the Tigers, the first solid base hit by the Tigers tonight. Line drive back through the middle off the bat of Phil Nevin. Valentin over to talk with the battery. Hasselman and Clemens. Osmus will be at the plate. He's a one for two. He bounced to short in the third inning, leading off. He let off the fifth inning with a single. Well, Clemens and the first trouble that he's seen all night long. Strike one. Four nothing, Boston in the lead. Oh, 
One and one on Brad Asmus. Cool, breezy night here at the corner. Yeah, it's kicked up a little bit, too. One, one, the count. One ball, two strikes on Asmus. Well, Rogers still with that good movement on his pitches, just exploding right before the batter. He has not walked anybody. He's allowed three hits. One man for each son in there. Watch this ball move in on Osmus and tie him up. Just explodes right before home plate. Here's the one two pitch. Fouled away. Just spoiled a good one there. No matter what happens from now on, we've seen a great performance by Roger Clemens. Boy, we sure had. This is worth the price of admission, and Ernie and I didn't even have to pay. Osmus waiting on a 1 2 delivery, and Clemens is going to step off the slab. strikeout and here it is that fastball watch it swing back on the outside part of the plate he has done that several times tonight the Tiger hitters that fastball low and away and we're going to have a pinch hitter Phil Hyatt is going to come out to hit for Barty and Ernie I don't know how many times he has caught Tiger batters taking a third called strike on that very same pitch here tonight talking it over how they want to pitch high and how they want to play him from an infield standpoint. Garcia Para certainly knew him knew talking about Hyatt. He played triple A baseball in the International League with against Hyatt. Hyatt's been about 20 times this year. He has four hits. And remember, he struck out 179 times at Toledo while pounding out 42 home runs. Roger Clemens has racked up 18 strikeouts. Two on, one down. Strike on the pinch at a high. That's one of the few sliders that Clemens has thrown tonight. Perfect location once again. Davis is at second. Nevin at first. There's another strike delivered to the pinch hitter. Well, I think that was one of the few pitches that Clemens has gotten from the umpire tonight. That looked a little bit low and outside. But believe me, he has not gotten many of them. He has earned what he has gotten tonight. It's a wide one, uh, one and two on the Phil Hyatt. Boston leading four nothing. Roger Clemens with a brilliant performance. The 19th strikeout for Roger Clemens. I tell you, there's some Boston fans, but I think most of the fans here tonight are paying tribute to an outstanding performance by a longtime great pitcher in the major leagues. One shot of the record.
Bobby Higginson at the plate. He's bounced to second and struck out twice. And there's a strike to Bobby. Two on, two out. Ernie, you know, I, I sound like a broken record, but he's had such great stuff tonight, but he continues to paint those corners. That one's in close, one and one on Higginson. This is the eighth inning with two on and two out. Roger Clemens with 19 strikeouts. Wow. One short of his own major league record of 20. Strike two, one ball and two strikes. Two on, two out in the Tiger Eight. Fouled away. <laughs> I tell you, everybody's on pins and needles every pitch. In fact, a lot of the fans are standing. As they think maybe they will see baseball history made here tonight. Four runs, 11 hits, one error. Tigers, no runs. Three hits, one error. Two on, two out. Bobby Higginson at the bat. 2-2 two -two pitch from Clemens. It's a full count. The fans thought this was a strike, but you'll see it's low and inside. Ground ball to second. Fry over to Vaughn. That retires the side. We go to the ninth inning. Boston four, Detroit nothing. Roger Clemens and Boston lead the Tigers four to nothing. Now a reminder that Tiger Baseball on Passports is brought to you by the Learning Channel. Adventures for the mind, the Learning Channel. Defensive changes for the Tigers. Phil Hyatt, who came on to pinch hit for Kamara Barty, takes over in left field. Hyatt now playing left field. Bobby Higginson moves from left to center field. So Higginson now in center field. Ninth inning, the Red Sox coming to bat. They lead it 4 nothing. We'll have to wait till the last half the night for the climax of this one. Garcia Parra will lead it off for the Boston's in the ninth inning. He's walked twice. He's 0 for 2. Sager on the mound and delivers a ball low. Ernie, I just heard a report from the Tigers PR director, Tyler Barnes, that these 19 strikeouts tonight are the most by a major league pitcher since October 6th of 1991 when David Cohn did it. Little grounder to Fryman. He got him. Good play. Tiger shortstop. Now it'll be Mo Vaughn at bat in the ninth inning with one out. Well, watch Phil Nevin goes over, can't get it. Travis with a good quick throw to first base and gets Garcia Parra. And they put the big Mo shift on. Moe's had a single. He got it his last time at about a single in the four trips. He bounced out the other three times. Fly ball hit the left. That's Hyatt, the new left fielder, to put it away. And there are two down as we set the stage for the last half of the night. Jose Canseco will be the batter.
Looking toward that ninth inning, the Tigers' scheduled hitters against Clemens as he tries for the strikeout record will be Trammell, Sierra, and Clark, the first three, and then the Fryman after that. Two down in the ninth. Strike. Mr. McClellan said so. Four nothing, Boston leads ninth inning. Two strikes on Jose. Justin Thompson started. Nikowski and uh, Sager have followed him to the mound. Nikowski in the fifth inning, Sager in the seventh. Well, Jose not happy with himself. You see how he pulled off the ball? He had no chance to hit that, pulling off the ball like he did. One and two, the count on Conseco. Two two on Jose. I'll tell you, Ernie, I'm uh, not taking any other thing away from any other pitchers, but when you watch Clemens throw tonight and you watch another pitcher throw, it's like night and day, isn't it? Sure is. A little chopper that will roll foul over toward third, keeping the count two two on Conseco here in the ninth inning. Clemens in the ninth inning has a chance to set the major league record in strikeouts and at the end of eight and a half Boston four Detroit nothing. Nice round of applause makes his way to the pitcher's mound. Don't forget Big Ten football coming your way Saturday night at 1030. It's Louisville against the Michigan State Spartan. So that's Big Ten football here on Passport Saturday at 1030. What a night for Roger Clemens. We have used so many superlatives tonight and we may be even uh, underestimating those that we said Ernie because he has just been spectacular. I, you can't help but admire the way he has pitched tonight the explosiveness of all his pitches mainly his fastball and his split finger. I don't think he's thrown more than four or five breaking balls but the location has just been overpowering especially when he's needed it. Roger has fanned every Tiger in the batting order including the pinch hitter Hyatt who came into bat in the eighth inning and became the 19th the strikeout victim. He has three outs to go and as the old song used to say two out of three ain't bad and he bad if he gets two out of three he'll have a new record. Well you see eight innings five ground outs 19 strikeouts. How about that. No fly outs from Roger Clemens tonight. Now Roger has had at least two strikeouts in each of the first eight innings and he had three strikeouts in the second the fifth and the sixth innings. Alan Trammell will be the first man to face him and only one ball in this ball game hit by the Tigers that was hit hard that by Phil Nevin. Line drive back through the middle. Trammell had a single in the first. He bounced the second in the fourth. He took a call third strike in the sixth inning. And here we go in the last half of the night. He pops it up into the infield. Here comes Mo Vaughn, and he makes the catch for the out. Well, Tram got a few boos off that pop up, Ernie. Everybody rooting for those strikeouts. And Roger Clemens strikeout total is still 19. 19. He'll have to get the next two to set the record. Ruben Sierra is struck out in the first swinging took a call third strike in the fourth. He bounced to second in the seventh. Four nothing the Red Sox in the lead one down in the ninth inning. Ground ball up the middle and it will be through for a base hit by Sierra. A man on and a man out or Tony Clark. 
That's the fourth Tiger hit. They've all been singles. The three strikeouts for Tony Clark. One was a call third strike. One on, one out. Strike one. One more strikeout. Clemens ties the record. Two strikes on Tony Clark. Boy, two quick strikes. He has uh, fed Tony a lot of fastballs tonight. And he's had success above the belt. Pretty good eye on that pitch, Ernie. That ball did not miss by very much, but he nonchalantly took it. I guess it was outside a little bit, but pretty close. That one was 99 miles per. Little chop foul. He keeps himself alive. One and two on Tony Clark. Nineteen strikeouts for Roger Clemens, looking for number twenty. Two two. Well, I tell you what, he is still throwing as hard as he did earlier in the ball game. Been throwing in the nineties the whole ball game. Ninety-eight, ninety-nine miles an hour. <laughs> Ernie, this is as uh, fast as we've seen all year, without a doubt. Maybe in some years. He got a piece of it. like the record is safe but he still has a chance to tie his own record of 20 strikeouts it will not be broken we know that but he has racked up 19 that's a lot of K's oh baby he's cornered the Kmart today here's Fryman he struck out three times First inning in which uh, Clemens will not have two strikeouts. Ball one on Travis Fryman. When you look at his last 12 games, July 11th against the Tigers, as we said, he struck out 10. August 22nd against Oakland, he struck out 11. Boston in the lead, 4 0, the Tigers. I have two out and one out in the ninth inning. Ball won the count on Travis Fryman. And that one uh, gets by Hasselman and goes to the screen. A wild pitch. Sierra takes second. The count. He has not walked the man, Roger Clemens. But he's behind on Fryman now. There's a strike. Strike two on 
Travis Fineman. Tell you what, Ernie, he has been something special tonight. Roger Clemens. One strike away from tying his own major league record in strikeouts. 2 2 pitch. Tiger fans showing their appreciation of quite a feat here at Tiger Stadium. He got him. He ties his own record 10 years later from April 1986. On September 1996, Roger Clemens does it again. Well, you saw baseball history. Roger Clemens tonight milestones 100th career complete game 38th career shutout ties Cy Young as a Sox all time leader 192nd career win ties Cy Young as the Sox all time leader 20 strikeout ties his own major league record special very special Roger Clemens. We'll be back. Can say is wow. Four runs, 11 hits, one error for Boston Detroit. 0 oh, 4 and 1. Roger Clemens runs his record to 10 and 12. Justin Thompson takes a loss. He is now 1 and 6. And the play of the game is brought to you by Ford. Think Ford first. Right now, get as low as 2. <laughs> up to 2. Selected <laughs> vehicles at your 31 Metro Detroit Ford dealers. And here it is, strikeout number 20, Travis Fryman. Split finger fastball that ties his major league record of 20 strikeouts. Watch Travis Fryman's reaction as he is number 20 on the list here tonight. And there you're going to see Rogers' reaction. Better really put on a stadium. Three strikeouts. Three innings, two hits, one runner. And Ernie, uh, as you strikeout. know, I use colored pencils. Uh, <laughs> Uh, orange for strikeouts, and there you can see them. They show up rather well tonight. Everything is okay, part. I'd say. <laughs> what a performance, partner. It was a great performance, and we were lucky to be sitting in on this. I'm sorry we didn't have a bigger crowd for it, but the, the crowd that was here, over 8,000, oh. they really got into it. <laughs> great deal, and it's just a magnificent thing to see a pitcher with that kind of ability and to rise to the occasion the way that Roger Clemens did. He really did. You have to give a little credit to Hasselman, the catcher. There you see uh, Roger Clemens being interviewed by Boston Television. Uh, you can see he's very emotional after the performance here tonight. But uh, it is so <laughs> as he ties the major league mark for strikeouts. And one of the amazing things, uh, Jim, is that he uh, did it uh, 10 years apart. He did it in uh, 86, and he does it again in the 96. And I think our hats off have to be to Roger Clemens. He sort of overshadowed the entire ball game and the result that, that saw the Tigers go down in defeat. But a salute to Roger. There's no question about that. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. One of the great pitchers over the last 10, 12 years out of the University of Texas came on and just has done a great job all throughout his career. And to think, and Ernie, you mentioned it, he set the record 10 years ago. <laughs> 10 years later, tying that record as we take another look at the live shot of Roger Boston <laughs> Television, but by the veteran Roger Clemens. And to put a little exclamation point on it, he does it in the thick of the pennant race, too. That's right. It wasn't any just a, a little game that didn't make any difference. They're fighting to stay in the pennant race. Well, let's take a break, and then we'll be right back. <laughs> 